Hello, how's everybody? This is going to be ex um, Jehovah Witness tape, um, YouTube on how how Jehovah Witnesses um, produce strong ex Jehovah Witnesses. Um, <clears throat> I was doing, I was uh, thinking about a lot of things today, and I and I wanted to like really come up with something that will answer the question but this first part and I would have to really really search my mind for the second part if there's a second part to this but it pretty much ends up in a question and um, because it was very intense the first part to where I was thinking the things at first I was thinking about the things that you learn as a Jehovah Witness. And then the second thing, then I wanted to put it together is how, you know, um, our ex Jehovah Witnesses, the characteristics, the things that we go through, the things that we learn, and what we become as ex Jehovah Witnesses. How is that, how is that tied into what we learn as Jehovah Witnesses? And we come from Jehovah Witnesses, from Jehovah Witness families. So, I would have to say that we're produced, I mean, not mechanically or anything, but then something is produced from something that happened in one's life. So, first I'm going to talk about the things that um, we learn as Jehovah Witnesses. And then, after I finish this tape, after I finish this YouTube, I will be able to see, because I have to research um, uh, how they tie in to being an ex-Jehovah Witness, a, a loving, strong ex-Jehovah Witness. Some people don't make it. I mean, I have um, a nephew who I never even talked to because I was um, disfellowship. He could draw, he could write, he was just a beautiful artist, from what I heard. Because I remember when he was real, real young. And he ended up, you know, it was, it was a very sad story. But he ended up um, committing suicide, which was really, really a gruesome story. That I don't know the whole thing about it, but I know it had that he was a Jehovah Witness. And I know his father very much because his father was my brother. So I know everybody doesn't make it, but there are many on YouTube that has made it. And I think we help each other to force, we need each other for our strength. And also I think that it's a good thing that we're here is because a lot of them coming out don't have a place to go, but we provide them with the knowledge to live a life outside of Jehovah's Witness because it's a place that we started in and it holds dear to our heart because so many things are in our heart so anyway getting back to start of this um, YouTube on um, what did we learn as Jehovah's Witness well first of all I wanted to say that we learned well we learned a lot of things uh, we learn a lot of what not to do um, there's other religions too where you can't do this, you can't do this, and you can't do that. But this one I'm talking about, this one is where you learn things that um, a very strong base for Jehovah Witness is like the Bible, which I've been getting into the origin of the Bible and how it's, it's important in all Christian lives. But they can take it for granted because um, they're not no matter what happens in their religion, they still are able to go to the Bible because the Bible is very strong. The Bible is something that we as Christians um, hold on to and believe in. And it's a very important framework in the Bible. However, the Jehovah Witnesses have, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, has um, produced a book that they call um, that they call the Bible. So a lot of things that Christians take for granted 
we cannot they cannot take for granted being a Jehovah witness so you don't have that Bible there because another thing you cannot which is really strange is that you cannot read other Bibles I mean you could do it in secret but it's just a, a lot of things that I'm talking about is just a given as a Jehovah witness a reaction a human reaction is like we know I mean, they didn't say you don't read other Bibles. We just know that we can't go to other Bibles, you know. And if some, if you're in on, out in service and someone brings up another Bible, you're like, oh no, you know. It's like you just cut off, cut off. So that's one thing that we learn. One thing I can say is that we learn how to cut off things without any regret, without anything. I even you can even, I, I, I was in Denver and I worked at this one uh, restaurant and there was this table that was really strange. It was like a wall was there and I found out it was a table of Jehovah Witnesses. It's just you could feel the, the non-openness to who you were. So that's one thing we learned. We learned how to cut off things without, like even, I mean, I've done it, I, I've done light shunning um, everybody as a Jehovah Witness when they were Jehovah Witness they had to show others that they shunned I mean like um, there have been a lot of people who were disfellowship while I was Jehovah Witness and I just when they said their name and you can't speak to them it was just like okay you can't speak to them no question no nothing no thinking it was not an ability that we had to say, okay, well, this person, oh, but this person was so nice. Oh, but I did this to this person. Oh, I did this with that person. No, it was just a cut off. So we know how to do that cut off. That's one thing that we do very well. When we go to work and we're Jehovah Witnesses, we know that um, we have to cut off. We know there's a line that we have to do. I was very, I mean, like, personally, I did do the cutoff, but what got me into being an ex Jehovah witness, for one thing, is that um, I didn't really, I mean, I cut off, but I had a little, um, okay, like, for instance, at work, I would cut off a lot of things, but I had a sensitivity to people. So I cut off, but I still kind of was sensitive to people in the world. But I know about how to cut off. And and I did, for the most part, at work. I mean, especially my first job, um, there was this, uh, I was cutting grass. And there was this one guy, he knew that we were Jehovah Witnesses and um, I just knew how to cut off and be that person that he expected me to be. So, and even at work, I worked in a department store. I knew how to just be um, that person that doesn't let other people in, okay? Like I said, I was a little sensitive to it. I remember when a boss said, just use my number at the register, and I, I didn't use his number at the register, and I, and I told him, he said, you didn't use my number. I go, I'm not using your number. And he met with me. He wanted to have a meeting with me, and he met with me. It was like in gardening or something. And he goes, because I was the way I was, he wanted me to work in his department and he goes, these people steal, a lot of people steal and a lot of kids steal, you know, just when I was really young and I would like for you to work with them. But I still had that cut off and it was like, no, I don't want to work in this department. And although I did do something right by not doing his number, it was not because of something in myself, it was the way that I had to be as a Jehovah Witness. I used to cut off, you know. 
it wasn't something like naturally ingrained in me. I just knew that those were the rules and the rules were to be that way. So it's different from being like Christian and not doing something like that and just not doing it because you know that that's just the way. It's no, it's no other way. I mean, there's no question about it, you know. So we have to cut off. And when some friends are disfellowship or whatever, you know how to cut off. So we learn how to do that. We learn how to be not with the crowd. When somebody says, when somebody sneezes, <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. When somebody um, uh, uh, sneezes and they say, God bless you, you know not to say anything. Not to be part of the crowd. When there's a birthday party, you know not to be part of the crowd, not to be part of it. So we kind of exclude ourselves. So we learn how to exclude ourselves. We learn how not to celebrate holidays. Um, we know about our friends. We have beautiful friends in the organization and we know that there's a limit. We know that if we do something that goes against the Jehovah Witnesses, we know that our friends are going to tell on us, okay? So we have a friendship, but it's not, it's not unconditional, definitely. And I'm not talking about bad things. I'm talking about just, it's not, it's not unconditional. It's not condition. It's not unconditional. It's the conditions we have friends that we have, but it's under strict conditions. And the one thing I want to say is that a lot of things, the way that we have our spiritual paradise, when we're Jehovah Witness, a lot of it is human nature. I mean, there is rules and regulations, but I've learned that there's a lot of human nature, nature, nature in the spiritual paradise, which is not made from Jehovah Witnesses or their rules, because I was saying like the way we treat each other at the assemblies, the way we treat each other in get togethers, when we meet each other, when we meet someone that's a Jehovah Witness and we don't know them, a lot of things are human nature. So I when I was going through the boxes of you seeing what I did when I was Jehovah Witness, I found that a lot of things are human nature and and mixed in with the rules and regulations of Jehovah Witnesses. So I'm not going to give Jehovah Witnesses credit for everything for as far as the whole spiritual paradise that we have when we go to the assemblies, when we go to um, when we go to get togethers and things like that. Because there's a human nature and we, and we as humans treat each other very well. One thing that I can say for sure is that um, with the rules of Jehovah Witnesses, we know that we at parties, we don't get drunk. We don't, um, we don't like make scenes. I have not been to a get together that there was a scene that was made. So right now we're speaking and about all the things that we've learned as Jehovah Witnesses. And um, the question is, with the things that I'm speaking about, how did we become um, strong, loving ex-Jehovah Witnesses? Because I know not all of us make it to that beautiful place as an ex Jehovah Witness, strong and loving, you know, but a lot of us do. I, I, I don't know of one that I met, but I'm, that's another that's another topic. So sticking with that, so as I speak about the Jehovah Witnesses, we have to keep that in our mind, and then I'll get to the YouTube later on in another time of putting this information into how we became strong ex Jehovah Witnesses, loving ex Jehovah Witnesses. So we have that at get-togethers. We've never, ever, ever, I've never seen a scene at an ex Jehovah Witness. At a congregation, 
Um, I've never really seen any scenes in the congregation, maybe one here and there, maybe sometimes, <laughs> when um, uh, an evil slave class, we used to have call them evil slave class, apostates were used to be evil slave class. <clears throat> they used to call them evil slave class. And when they would come into the meeting, and this is another thing that we are, that we learned, they would be at the assembly, or they come into um, the meeting, and in the middle of the meeting, or toward the end of the meeting, they would stand up and go, He's lying! He's lying! He's lying! Get out of this place! And all this other stuff. And what we learned was not to phase. Not to have it even, not even to worry about it. Excuse me, not even to think about it. And that that person was the evil slave class. So we learned to keep that strength that we had of just staying and not questioning anything, but not saying, not even having the, the slightest um, doubt. Like, for instance, we would never, ever, after the congregation, say, why did that person um, come in? We wouldn't even talk to that person. Wouldn't even talk about that person at all. So we followed directions to the T as far as that's concerned. When we have relatives, we keep a distance with our relatives as far as the ones that are not Jehovah Witness. That's another thing we learned because my love to Jehovah Witness, which I can't get into now because we're talking about being a Jehovah Witness and the things we learned. So I can only say that we learn to keep a distance from non-Jehovah Witness family members, which is sad, which is, goes to other YouTube though. So we learn how to keep our distance, which is, like I said, pretty much of an underground, we become pretty much of an underground society. So what are other things? Oh, we learn not to be embarrassed, which I put in another tape. You can say anything, even, I, I put this in one, but I did attend a community college and I had a English paper to do. And um, my professor said we needed, um, I know we're not supposed to go to school, but I went. Um, we went to, I mean, I um, she had an English paper and she said, give five references and she explained what the references was since I was just out of high school and she wanted five references and I got all five references from Watchtower Bible and Tract Society and she said you when I put in the paper she goes you cannot use that as your references so I had this uh, how can you say we learned how to be um, so, I can't say the word, I've got so many subjects. Um, so, um, I mean, I thought the Watchtower Bible and Tracts of Society knew everything. I mean, we were taught <clears throat> and we learned that the Watchtower Bible and Tracts Society and the governing body was the last word. So we learned how to put them on high. There's a word for it, but that's basically what we've learned is that the Watch Our Back Society and the governing body words come first. So that's why I used all my references for that. But I did notice when I was doing the references, when I was doing the topics, I was going through the A book, I was going through the bond, bound volumes, of my for my information and now I could see from opening up these boxes that they didn't have too much information that I could do this paper on but I didn't question myself and I just kept saying you know oh I gotta find it here or oh I gotta find it here I even trusted them above the library so we trust the um, governing body in the Rochtower Bible and Tract Society over 
all the books in the library and everything that is learned from the world. So we put them on high. So that's another thing we learned. We learned how to, um, how to just um, uh, how, shorten our knowledge or um, can, not condense our knowledge, but to not expand our knowledge. That's another thing we learned. We learned not to expand what we've learned as far as Jehovah Witness is concerned. And there was another point while I was telling you that point about something that we learned. So that's another thing we learned. We learned not to expand our mind, not to go past what we've learned as Jehovah Witness. There was a point. Now this is the point, another one. Um, uh, oh boy, did I lose it? Another point was that we learned how not to expand our knowledge, not to ask questions. Oh, this is such a beautiful point. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get it. Uh, okay, so we learned not to expand our knowledge. And there's another point that I wanted to put, but I, I lost it. I should have just said it right then. Uh, okay, so what's another thing that we've learned? We learned how to, um, we, did the, we did the field service. We did the not asking questions. And um, not to build our knowledge on things. And, um, oh, we also learned how not to... Um, if there's something that we're really interested in, like for instance, um, I like music. I loved music. I loved um, learning about, you know, uh, singing and dancing and uh, things like that, you know. But I learned how to do it in a way that um, is not would bring up any questions with the other brothers and sisters. Like, not to be, um, to show that I was um, going for worldly pleasures. Like, for instance, um, I wanted to do a band, but I couldn't talk about it to my friends. And we had a band inside the congregation, but we couldn't talk about it to other, other Jehovah Witnesses. So, we learned how to um, control, to limit our our desires, our, our our dreams. Learned how to limit our dreams. So those are the things that we learned. Now the question is, and I didn't get to the point. The question is, is how can all of these things? And the very sad point is that we knew that if we did something wrong or we left the congregation, that we would lose all of our friends. And that's one reason why we don't really linger on, we never call our friends back. I mean, I would never call my friends back and say, you know, I left the Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, are you going to talk to me? No, we wouldn't do that because we already know in our agreement that they're not going to be our friends anymore. So we know how to, we know, we learn how to keep our friendship to a certain level to where we walk on thin, I'm mean, not walk on ice, we walk on thin ice Kind of like that, because we know we can't do certain things. We know we can't say certain things to our friends. So that's it for now. But now the point is, and this is going to draw the tie, the line, is how can we find out of all the things that we learned, how can we find out what made us ex-Jehovah Witnesses strong, 
ex-Jehovah Witnesses, what made us, out of all these things that we did when we were Jehovah Witnesses, what made us strong, loving Jehovah Witnesses? Strong enough to make these YouTube videos, strong enough to think things out, and we came from such um, such uh, surroundings to where everything that we do now has nothing to do with what we were as Jehovah Witnesses. But in still and yet, I can see that when I talk to an ex Jehovah Witness, even when I go online to ex Jehovah Witness sites, I can tell which ones are Jehovah Witness sites, which one where some of them from their comments are not actually Jehovah Witnesses. I can tell in an instant. Okay. So what made us these people? And that's going to be what I have to think about in order to come up with this next YouTube video about this actually ends it to where I'm saying what made us strong, loving ex-Jehovah Witnesses. Thank you very much.